Can everybody hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. My name is Abdul Rahim, and I would like to uh, start by saying thank you all for coming out here. I'm speaking on behalf of the Eye Care Campaign. I'd like to start by saying assalamu alaikum, and may peace be with you to everybody that's here. The fact that everybody could make it here today means that we're living in a way that is comfortable, if not better. Unfortunately, this is a benefit that is not shared with everybody in the world. As I'm sure everybody here is aware, there is a drought and famine threatening the lives of millions of people in the Horn of Africa. With the area of concentration being around Somalia, with roughly 3.6 million Somalis affected, and the numbers thought to be growing. Got that from Voice of America. Articles maybe like a month old now. I'm sure the number's a lot higher. Uh, the people here are like starving and dying of dehydration every single day, and they're struggling for the basic necessities of life. Men and women are walking hundreds of miles across scorched deserts to find the minimum amount of basics needed for life, such as food and water. And sadly, to make the situation worse, many of these same men and women are burying their children on the road to survival. But there's been a recent call from the international community to help this situation get food and water and medical supplies to these people. So the situation in Somalia is at least looking a little bit brighter. But a little known fact in this drought is the state of the people in a territory in Ethiopia known as Ogaden. The people here are ethnic Somalis, and the drought has hit them even harder than Somalia. But I'm sure that most of the people here, I mean, everybody here obviously knows about Ogadenia, but I'm sure a lot of the other people who aren't here, the, the everyday American citizens that aren't here, they aren't here because they don't know what's going on. And since many of these people don't know of what's going on in the region, or maybe even never heard of the region, they don't know that almost all of our aid money and food that has been sent to Ogaden was intercepted by the Ethiopian government, and none of it has gotten to the people. In fact, the Ethiopian government has even banned all NGOs and other organizations like Red Cross from giving out food, water, or medical supplies. But I'm going to stop right there for a moment. I'm going to use a word that has many different definitions to many different people, and this word is genocide. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, Genocide is the deliberate and systematic destruction of a racial, political, or cultural group. Throughout history, we have many times seen genocide's cruel face. One of the prime examples of genocide was the Indian removal under President Andrew Jackson, where thousands of Native Americans were marched across the country in the dead of winter and died on the way to their new home. This has been rightfully named the Trail of Tears. Another genocide, but not blatantly the face of genocide, was the enslavement of the African people brought across the ocean as slaves for the rich European settlers who had already stolen from the natives, and then they were killed and relocated. The slave trade resulted in the death of approximately 1.2 to 2.4 million Africans, according to BBC. And these are common genocides we've all heard of. More recent genocides include the elimination of the Jewish people by the Nazis, the ethnic Bosnians in Yugoslavia. Now that I have covered the history of genocide and what genocide is, I'm going to show you how this all connects with the horn. The famine in the horn caused by the current drought is first time the international community has become aware of the Ogaden region. But this famine is not the reason the people are dying of starvation. In fact, all the famine has done is give the Ethiopian government another weapon to use against the people. What is happening right now, where we all live comfortably, is a hidden silent genocide in Ethiopia. For the last 27 years, there has been a group called the ONLF fighting for freedom from this oppressive regime. Some of the common practices of the Ethiopian army against the innocent people are torture, rape, mutilation, assassination, and complete annihilation of entire towns and cities. And what I can almost guarantee is that since most people have never heard of this region, they've never heard of these events happening. So why isn't a genocide of this magnitude in the spotlight? Why is there so much aid and help going to all these other suffering people, but not the people of the Ogaden who've been suffering way longer than this current drought? The answer is simple. The Ethiopian regime keeps everything under closed doors because they have declared the ONLF a terrorist group. And because they have declared them a terrorist group, that means they can keep out any aid, any help, any support from anybody without any questions asked. I'm going to read a direct quote. This came from ONLF.org. It was on the BBC News Night Investigative Report, Ethiopia Using Aid as a Weapon of Repression. I'm sure a lot of people have read this report or at least heard about it. All right. BBC News Night investigative report titled Ethiopia Using Aid as a Weapon of Repression, aired on the 4th of August 2011, represents an accurate portrayal of the state of affairs in Ethiopia and correctly represents the conduct of the regime led by Melis Zanawi as it relates to using food aid as a weapon of repression. 
The report detailed how international humanitarian assistance has been politicized by the regime, noting how needy civilians considered to be opponents of the regime's policies are systematically denied much-needed humanitarian aid. The broadcast showed Ogaden civilians describing rape and torture at the hands of this regime, many fleeing to refugee camps in neighboring Kenya. It is worth noting... Excuse me. It is worth noting the difficulty the BBC team faced in conducting interviews in an environment where fear of the regime is the norm and retribution for speaking to international media is commonplace. Nowhere is suffering at the hands of this regime more severe than in the Ogaden, where food aid has been used as a weapon of repression for years. So I'll ask you again, why haven't we heard about the problems in this region? Is it because the ethnicity of those being killed? Is it because of their religion? Or is it because there's no direct interest to the foreign policy in America? Perhaps it is not the region is ignored. Maybe it's the fact that there's nothing noteworthy or quote unquote newsworthy value to our current rating system to what's in and out. What's going to make our news more popular? Maybe that's why they don't care. It took years before the hidden genocide in Darfur was revealed. And it was only revealed because the concerned people in America and other communities across the world took interest to uncover the truth and make a difference. The facts are all before you. Now it's time to act and make a difference. So on behalf of the I Care campaign and all the voiceless people in the Ogaden, I urge you, please join our cause. Be the voice of the voiceless. Help eliminate this genocide from the world and make a better place for all of us. It is people like you who have helped with so many other crises in the world. So please, help us stop this humanitarian catastrophe and inhuman genocide. Thank you so much for your time today. May peace be with you all.